All right. It's great to talk to you today. I have Dr. Dana Z. Anderson from Inflection, and we're going to talk about a lot of exciting things in the frontier of quantum physics today, including Bose-Einstein condensates and the new Octant platform at Inflection. So first, thank you so much. And tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me here, Anastasia. My background is uh, first, let's work from two directions. I was trained in quantum optics, born and raised a physicist, biophysicist, more or less. I'm an applied physicist, so I like to do things that sooner or later are useful. So for example, in my PhD, I worked on ring laser gyroscopes, which are inertial sensors. And as we talk today, we may come back to the topic of inertial sensors for measuring rotation for positioning and navigation and guidance. And then as a postdoc, I worked on the laser uh, gravitational wave interferometer that became LIGO, which 30 years later detected gravity waves. So as I said, I like to do useful things. They don't have to happen tomorrow, but they have to have utility sooner or later. Started in flexion in, in, uh, as cold quantum back in 2007. That itself is a story. Yes, definitely. So I know the history. So you all transitioned to inflection, but cold quanta has been around for a very little, long time doing a lot of other things. So can you tell me a little bit about what you all are doing? I'm a professor also at the University of Colorado Boulder, and my colleagues, Eric Cornell and Carl Wyman, were doing something that was awesome with uh, then cold atoms, using lasers to cool atoms. I thought that that was going to be extremely useful. And then they achieved the demonstration of the first Bose-Einstein condensation back in 1995. I said, boy, that's really going to be useful because they did basically for atoms what lasers do for light. And I felt that that would change the world and that began a, a path that eventually became cold quanta, developing technology to enable the rest of the world to do useful things with these cold and ultra-cold atoms. So that gave birth to Cold Quanta as a spin-out from the University of Colorado based on the technology was to enable other people to do Bose-Einstein condensation. And I know that you're releasing this Octant platform so you can actually do a Nobel Prize experiment from the comfort of your own home. First, tell us, what are Bose-Einstein condensates? Let me tell you where it occurs and then try to tell you what it is because it is something both very exciting and in the end, uh, very mundane. You bring atoms uh, close together and first you cool them and cooling them means you remove their motion. There's another fellow that won a Nobel Prize named uh, Louis de Broglie back in the 20s who said, oh, oh, associated with particles, mass of particles is a wavelength. And that wavelength becomes longer and longer the slower they go. It turns out that if you cool atoms by laser cooling enough so that there's, and they become so close together that they're within one wavelength, particle wavelength of each other, they begin to talk and interact in such a way that they'll eventually condense into a new form of matter called the Bose-Einstein condensate. It's analogous, but also very different than water condensing into ice when you get it cold enough and close enough together. And this form of matter, uh, the significance of it is everything else in everyday life is governed by the laws of thermodynamics. A Bose-Einstein condensate is governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. So what they had done is make the first macroscopic, that is big, lots of atoms, state that was big enough to not quite see by eye, but almost about a little smaller than the size of hair. That was one quantum thing. All the atoms act together in one quantum wave function. Bo it's called Bose-Einstein condensate because it's a boson, right? So let's also define boson versus fermion because some people have heard of that. All particles fall into one of two classes, either boson and fermions. It gets a little technical detail in that fermions behave very differently than bosons because of what's called their internal spin. Bosons have integer spin, zero, one, two, three, and so on. Fermions have half integer spin. And fermions, by the way, electrons are, very, are fermions, and they govern the behavior of electronic circuits, for example. Bosons like to be together. Fermions do not. That's why it's, you know, the, the things that happen when you get a condensate are with bosons. However, on stage, they're called Bose-Einstein, not because they're bosons directly, but because they were conceived of by Indian man whose name, last name was Bose, and he had written a letter to Einstein about his ideas, and that's why it's called Bose-Einstein. But the boson, indeed, you're right, is named after the same guy. The name of the uh, the very famous person uh, conceived that Bose-Einstein condensation should happen, 
and Einstein got his name because he supported very much uh, the, these ideas, and he fellow by the name of Bose. I actually had no idea about that, so you learn something new every day in physics. Yeah, so, good. So, tell me a little bit, what's the role of BECs in understanding quantum phenomena? I'm going to do two things, because let me tell you, I'm extremely excited about Octon, and I want to give you a little bit more history uh, about it. As I said, Eric, uh, Cornell and Carl Wyman uh, here and Wolfgang Ketterle at MIT. I said, that's cool. We have to produce that. We have to produce other people enabling to produce that. And we did that. First at the university, uh, we made the first transportable BDC machine. So these things are, had been huge. And we put it on a cart, roughly the size of a dorm room refrigerator or two. And because we did that in flexion, then Cold Quantic commercialized it and they'd sell it. Once we did that, we got a call from NASA, almost literally, Jet Propulsion Labs. Hey, that's cool. Now that's commercial. We want to put it in space. Octon's ancestor has been aboard the International Space Station since 2018, operating every day, operating over the cloud for scientists to carry out experiments in a gravity-free environment, technically a microgravity environment, uh, with the machine that we helped to build that's now in the International Space Station. Everything is done over the cloud, literally, is a new scientific tool to study quantum matter into space, which is not only a scientific interest, but also utilization interest. For example, in later space-based systems, very much like Octane, very much like what's on the International Space Station, they want to make a system for doing Earth monitoring, which can be used to look at the, say, mass change as the polar ice caps melt, make measurements to assess, for example, climate change. We saw the utility of the system that was up in space, A. Next, this stuff is really, really hard, so we wanted to make it available to anybody, and hence Octant. And I'll get more into that, but you asked, what can we learn about quantum? For the first time with Octant, anybody can produce a quantum wave function. Now, that's a mysterious beast for many, many people. It's And there's lots of mystics and magic about wave functions and quantum mechanics. You can take a photograph, technically, of the square of the wave function, but you can take a photograph of the wave function the first time. And all the kinds of other concepts that you've heard about but are kind of mysterious, like tunneling. Tunneling is the idea that if you have a wall that's this, that is this high, say the top of my head, and you throw a ball at it, if the ball didn't go high enough, it just bounced out the wall. You throw it so over the wall, it'll get over the wall. But in tunneling, even though you send a particle that doesn't have enough energy to climb the wall, it can still manage to go through the wall with some probability. You can study tunneling with octant. You can study interference. So imagine you have a collection of ping pong balls. You have two clouds and you allow them to be thrown at each other. Well, you know what happened. If they're dense enough, they would just bounce off each other. If they're not, they would just go right through each other. In octant and in quantum mechanics, you get interference. Strangely, ping pong balls will not appear where they should be because of destructive interference or appear much more than you think because of constructive interference. So even though they're particles like hard spheres, you still get according to De Broglie, these interference phenomena, and you can make that happen and witness them. Now, that's all about education, but then there's the useful things that you could also do with Octon. But I'll give you a pause to ask me more about questions of what I've just said or something else. No, that's perfect. We can go on. The biggest reason I'm excited about Octon, not simply because of the educational and the experience of quantum, but it's meant to allow users to innovate. Here's the problem as inflection sees it. Quantum mechanics is hard. Quantum technology is going to be extremely important. We're limited by how many people, how many innovators have access to quantum technology. The goal about Octave is that now anybody can pursue ideas and innovate, in particular, say, develop their own sensing technology or what have you. We do this in electronics, for example, by providing people with breadboards for developing certain kinds of circuits or certain new kinds of computers and so on. You buy a breadboard and you play with it. Quantum is too hard and expensive to do that. So instead, we provide it on the cloud. You can test out your ideas, your circuits, if you like, all on the cloud. Octant will provide the hardware for you to do that, but also the software for you to do that. Over time, we hope to have many people innovating, being familiar with, and then doing things that nobody else had done solve useful problems with the help of uh, quantum technology based on Octa. It's definitely a big thing now. A lot of quantum technologies are being put in the cloud. And one of the reasons for that is 
you can't really have a quantum system in your home. So for example, how much would it cost for someone to set up an experiment like that? That's a very good question. So we call that the barrier to entry, right? And if you were to start your own effort to build a BEC machine, it cost you two to $5 million. You'd need about three to five PhDs and a number of engineers that would take you two years. Now you can do it with just registering on the cloud. You can go to just inflection.com slash octant and sign up and run experiments every day if you want to. And it's actually going to a real machine with a real BEC in it. Can I give you the next part of the, the future of Octant and, and technology? Yes. Tell us the future of Octant. I'm going to build this up in the in the following way. You know, of course, we're so accustomed that we hardly know that we're dealing with incredible technology based on electronics. All computers, your iPhone, your refrigerators these days have a lot of electronics. And then all started with the, the transistor. You know, there was electronics before then, but it was really the transistor and then the integrated circuits which allowed it to take off and revolutionized modern technology. Then there was the laser. The laser, again, revolutionized telecommunications and many other aspects such that you have electronics in your iPhone. You also have, excuse me, in your smartphone, I should say, it might be Samsung, it might be Apple, and you have lasers and, and related optical technology. The way I view it is that quantum technology based on atoms is of that same level of importance. And you can literally, for example, make transistors that do the same thing with atoms that electronic transistors do with electrons. And that means that with octants, it's primitive today, but with the octant of the not distant future, you will be able to begin to design atomtronic circuits, a whole array of things, and conceive of circuitry that solves a class of problems that we can't even view today. Over time, I think that you'll see Octant's capability of developing atomtronic circuits for solving all kinds of problems in the same way that you see electronics solving all kinds of problems today. Furthermore, pathway for doing that is quite different because in the case of Octant, and I, I still find this remarkable, there aren't wires that control what atoms do. And, and batteries and so on, electronic batteries and so on, it said everything is done with light. So you manipulate the circuits, the way that atoms move, are all, it's all done with, with light. You can produce a circuit if you like, but if you want to change it, you can change it instantaneously. If you don't like what a given transistor or circuit, a given component is doing, you can change it right there. You don't have to go buy another one or send design another circuit. It's right in front of you. So the, the whole approach process for creating a circuitry for carry out innovation is entirely different than what we're used to. And I think this will accelerate the uptake of quantum and accelerate the solving of problems with this very advanced technology. If I were a student coming into your lab and I had access to Octant, what would be the first thing you'd have me run? Well, if you're really green off the block, so to speak, in quantum, the first thing I'd ha have you do is a, make a BEC. B, uh, split that BEC in two by putting a barrier and then dropping them to see interference. Then C, producing a barrier and getting a BEC and watching tunneling going across. The next thing I'd have my group would have you do that I'd make you do is a transistor to see how you can get very interesting nonlinear behavior. But there's lots of other things. You could make a sensor. You can make a little bit of an accelerometer. Lots of other small experiments that you can do to, first of all, see, to take photographs of, for example, how quantum behavior acid develops at a microscopic level, how you can make it do useful things, and how you can uh, make it do useful things in, this, in the same spirit as one does with electronics, for example. And I know with inflection and cold quanta, a lot of the times you're building solutions for things that you have problems that you're doing internally anyway. Right. So what are what is your team doing with Octant? My team doing two things. And it's interesting you say my team. I mean, it's the whole company I, uh, here over at the university, right. this small team. But one is uh, developing inertial sensors uh, for, for this is for the future of uh, small, very high precision quantum uh, sensing for PMT. It's very important to the welfare of this country. It's very important for autonomous vehicles, for shipping, national security in very context. For example, when GPS goes out, you want a PMT system so your vehicle still knows where it's going. It has to do with developing uh, circuitry in general and information processing, for example. One of my favorite problems on Stasia is called the cocktail party problem. I can, despite the air conditioning that's taking place behind me, I can focus in on your voice. 
or I could decide to sneak in on the conversation that's barely going on next door. That's a very interesting class of problems, which in the long term, uh, one can apply atomtronics to, that is the manipulation of atoms and atom circuitry to solve. Signal processing, quantum signal processing on the one hand, and inertial sensing on the other is what I spend my time thinking about problem solving with octant-like capability. Uh, I know you have, probably have next meetings, so um, just quickly, is there anything else that you want to mention about Octant that you haven't so far? I very much love to see a whole lot of people utilizing Octant, getting the machine so it you know it runs out of steam, uh, because if that happens, we're going to build more of them, and then uh, innovating and and feel free to communicate with us with feedback or ideas or what have you. We're very very ex excited about uh, its capabilities. Probably all I have time for.